there, my name is Colin Nanaya Abebrese, and you are welcome to His Gov TV. In this video, I'm going to show you a short um, documentary about the organization of African uh, unity. Uh, basically, um, the history behind the um, formation of the organization of African uh, unity, the OAU, or now called the AU, African uh, unity. But before we watch uh, the video, I would like to uh, give you a short uh, background introduction, uh, which you may not find in the documentary, uh, of course, so that you can add that to your knowledge about the Organization of African Unity, or the OAU. Now, one of the most important, I would say, um, education that every African should have is the African uh, Union or the African Unity, the OAU or the AU. Now it's called AU because um, it is so essential to the development of Africa and for each African country to see the full benefit of independence. Now, the OAU uh, was formed on May 25th, 1963, and it was formed in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, the capital town of Ethiopia. And, and that was when um, um, 32 independent African states signed a charter uh, to be part of the Organization of African uh, Unity. Now, initially, um, the idea or the brain behind uh, the committee was not for an organization. The brainchild behind the whole idea about African Union was Sergeant for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. And Kwame Nkrumah saw that if Africans did not come together to unite as one people, I mean, as one people with one uh, president, with one military uh, or policy or economic policy, Africa was not going to uh, benefit uh, from the full uh, realization of its independence. And so today, it's not surprising that you hear a lot of African, um, African countries or African citizens or people of Africa say that they don't see the essence of um, celebrating the independence of their various countries. And it's so sad to say this. And my country, Ghana, is not an exception. And the issue or the solution to this is one, African unity. Now, let me just give you a breakdown of what was supposed to be found in the African unity. Now, Nkrumah, who brought up the whole idea, and so in 1958, started to champion the idea of African unity. He saw how united or the importance of unity to some countries, like the U.S. of A, the United States of Africa, uh, America, whereby they were able to unite the first 13 colonies because that came to settle in the Americas area or in the in the New World, and they united them. And today, look at how powerful the United States is. In those days, during the Nkrumah's uh, days, we had the Soviet Union, the USSR. Look at how powerful they were. So in Africa, Nkrumah felt that see when you look at the African continent, it is one land. There is no division or there is nothing dividing the various um, countries in Africa. See, you can of course literally walk from South Africa to Egypt. It is one land. We are not separated by anything. So why can't we unite? Because before colonization, African countries were united. It was because of the partition of Africa that you know, brought about this whole demarcation of um, for political lines to say that here is Cote d'Ivoire, 
Of course, here is Ghana. Of course, here is Egypt. And therefore, if you wanted to travel from this uh, part of the country to this part of the land, you should have some kind of visa or a, a permit. You understand? To Nkrumah. That is how Africa, Africa was not like that. In pre-colonial Africa, you realize that Africa is one land. And therefore, why can't we unite? Now, the most interesting thing is that when you look at the United States, the map of the United States of Africa, we have Canada. Canada is found between uh, the, 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 the northern part of U.S. and the southern part of for U.S. There is Canada, because that separates the country today we call as United States of Africa. But even, even with that, they have managed to unite their country because they know the importance of or the essence of unity. Today, Africa, there is no African country for which is, there is no African country which is powerful. No African country is powerful in the world state today. And it is sad that on the UN permanent seat, no African country is of course represented on the permanent seat. And the reason is quite simple. Which African country are you going to represent on that permanent seat? Because even when you look at the West, they brand the whole of Africa as one country. They mention our name as African. They don't differentiate Ghana whatsoever. You are an African. They don't say you are even a Ghanaian or a Togolese. You are an African. And, you know, it takes foreign people to even advocate that Africa should be given a permanent seat on the, uh, uh, what do you call it, a, 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 a seat on the permanent, uh, uh, what do you call it, a permanent council of the UN. And quite, of course, recently, I also, I also heard um, I did, um, the Indian Prime Minister, who was also advocating that Africa should be given a slot in the G20 I G20 our countries. So because of the lack of unity, African countries are fragile. No African country is powerful in the world stage. And this Nkrumah knew that it would happen if African countries did not come together to unite as one people. And that is what we are experiencing today. So in African unity to Nkrumah, he felt that Africa should have one president. The various countries in Africa are going to be called state. So we can have a state of Ghana, state of Egypt, state of Togo in the United States of Africa, the USA. Then, because we are one country, we can have a common policy, a common, a common economic policy. These economic policies are there to ensure that we are not cheated on the world market that we don't even become only our producers of raw materials. A lot of African countries don't even trade among ourselves. Why? Because of the fact that, you know, because of the colonial economy, our mindset, our economy is structured in such a way that we are all interested in trading with the West. And this in Krumah felt was not good. So in African unity, we will have a common military high command whereby there will be um, a military for the United States of Africa. Today, we, we see a lot of encroachment on sovereign countries like Libya, where the U.S. and some, of course, British officials came all the way to overthrow a president of Libya. So this and many more were some of the reasons why Nkrumah felt that African unity was very, very essential. So let's watch the video of the African unity. And well, if you have any um, suggestions, any, any question, any of our contribution to the issue of this African uh, unity, you should share that in the comment section for us. Forward then to independence. To independence now, tomorrow, the United States of Africa. The Organization of African Unity, OAU, was founded in May 1963 in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, by 32 African states, with the main aim of bringing the African nations together 
and resolve the issues within the continent. Its first ever conference was held on 1st May 1963 in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Soon after achieving independence, a number of African states expressed a growing desire for more unity within the continent. Not everyone agreed on how this unity could be achieved. Two opinionated groups emerged in this respect, and they were the Casablanca Bloc, and they were led by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana, and the Moravian Bloc, also led by Senghor of, Ni of Senegal. The Casablanca Bloc wanted a federation of all African countries. Aside Ghana, it also comprised of Algeria, Guinea, Morocco, Egypt, Mali, and Libya. The Moravian bloc on the other side felt that unity should be achieved gradually through economic cooperation. It did not support the notion of a political federation. Its other members were Nigeria, Liberia, and Ethiopia, and other former French colonies. The dispute was eventually resolved when Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie I invited the two groups to Addis Ababa, where the OAU and its headquarters were subsequently established. The charter of the organization was signed by 32 African states. The formation of the Organization of African Unity was not the intended aim. The main aim of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and other Casablanca group members was to form a union of African states, where the continent of Africa becomes one country called the United States of Africa with its own currency, president, and military. Hence, the OAU was a mere organization without any political backing. Therefore, at the extraordinary summit of the Organization of African Unity held in Syria, Libya in 1999, a decision was reached on the need to transform the OAU into African Unity AU. The African Unity AU came into being at Durban, South Africa in 5 July 2002 through the efforts of the Libyan leader, Colonel Mama Gaddafi. The union's first chairman was the host, uh, President Tobo Mbeki of South Africa, became the first chairman of the African Unity. Now, the founding fathers of Organization of African Unity. Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana, Seko Ture of Guinea, Jomo Kenyatta of Kenya, Emperor Haile Salasi of Ethiopia, Modibo Keita of Mali, and Julius Nayere of I'm Tanzania. French room, and it was the dream of uh, Saj for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah for all these African um, countries uh, to come together to fight against colonial rule. And after the fight against colonial rule, uh, Nkrumah aimed at all these um, countries coming together to form a state. And then the um, continent Africa would become a country and it will be called the United States of Africa. In Nkrumah's speech, uh, he says that the enemies of Africa is many and, and that they were ready to pounce on them. And he uh, reminded all the leaders at the conference that it is time for Africa and this decade was the decades of Africa's independence and um, towards a continental um, unity. And at this conference, he um, told them about the importance of African unity. Uh, according to him, in the United States of Africa, there was going to be a single currency for all the African continent. There was going to be a military high command for the whole of African continent to protect each um, sovereign state. Uh, uh, and that is the country which now would become states. And there will be one uh, particular flag, which will be the flag for the United States of Africa. What were the aims of the AU? One was to promote unity and solidarity of African states. Two was to ensure cooperation to achieve better life for the people of Africa. Three 
is to stand against and get rid of all forms of external exploitation and interference in internal affairs of member states. Four is to ensure peace in Africa by settling disputes among member nations so as to prevent any confrontations. Five is to eradicate all forms of colonialism and neocolonialism from African continents.